this. Did you guys hear that? Let me see if this prompts any questions. You guys remember there's a quiz today, right? Anybody remember what the quiz is on today? How to find the equation for the line of best fit. Okay. All right. Just so you know, uh, let me show you this real quick and then we'll do a quick problem together, Alex. Um, let me put this up here. Is this the right thing? Let's find out together. All right. Do you guys see Canvas right now? Yes, thank you. Um, so later, as soon as this, um, uh, what do you call it? This lecture, there it is, there's a word, is over. See, I can see this. You won't be able to see this yet. See, I haven't published it yet, but when this lecture is over, I'll publish it. You guys can go get it. So that quiz is going to be on correlation. That's why it's sitting in this correlation module here. Uh, let me see. Oh, there's a question. Hold on. So let's see. Maybe this will go together. So Alex, all right. So let me stop sharing that. Let me see, do I still have the book up here? No. Why would I? Good job, Jeff. So let's see, 12, three, number 21. Let me see if I can get the book real quick, like, like really quick. No, I can't do that real quick. So 12, three, number 21. I'm just gonna keep saying that to, until I get, let's see now, what is it, 12, three, number, what number was it again? Oh, number 21. All right, finally, let's see. Uh, 21 says, use regression to find, okay, so that's your question, okay. All right, so let's do a quick example. So that's just asking you to find the equation for the line of best fit, right? So let's do a quick example together. Um, let's see, let's all do this together, right? Get out your handy name. Oh, look at that, it's, I gotta turn off the night. Turn off the night, that's weird. Oh, okay, there we go. Now, uh, get out your old calculator or whatever, maybe even have it upside up, <laughs> right? So, now, let's do this, everybody do this with me very quickly go into your lists and clear those clear I don't know what you got in there just clear them get them out of there right okay if you want to try this out with me then stay with me here we go I'm gonna put into L1 I'm gonna put four five six seven Right, is there schmutz on my screen? Yeah, get out of here, schmutz. That was my battery, my battery's good. So I put four, five, six, seven in L1. L2, I'm gonna put uh, 10, eight, five, two, like that. So if you wanna play along, play along, play along with me, okay. All right, so hopefully you guys got those four numbers, right? So I'm gonna put that data in. Somebody just came in, so if you wanna, four, five, six, seven, and then 10, eight, five, two. Where do I go? What do I push to get the line of best fit? Anybody? Alex is like, dude, I don't know. I asked the question. What, what, not, what button do I push? What's the first button I push to get in the direction of finding the line, line of best fit? Yeah, it's so really is, is basically, if you're not sure, say the stat button, <laughs> I mean, yeah, good. And Raul's got even the next step. So I'm gonna push the stat button, good old stat button. That's a pretty good guess for any button that I ask to push for this class. Uh, and then once you're in there, you wanna go to calc, right? You wanna go to calc. And then of course, we talked a little bit about four and eight, both do the same thing. It's kind of silly. So we just go ahead and use four. And then it comes up with this. Oh, what's up, Garen? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, don't do that. Good Lord. Yeah, don't do that. 
That's a little bit more than we need. Uh, let's see, blah, 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 never mind, okay. All right, so once you get here, if you have an old calculator, it just says linreg, hit enter, it defaults to list one, list two, which is actually sort of nice. This one you gotta go through, make sure it's L1, L2, and then calculate. And there you go. Right, so what's the slope? Negative 2.7, what's the y-intercept? 21.1, why is the r so good, right? Isn't, the r, isn't that r good? Why is that r good? How do you get the r again? Oh, shit, okay, I'll do that in a minute, Raul, hold on. Why is that r good? That's a damn good R. All right, we'll do, we'll do, all right, let's do that. We'll do that. You could have just answered the question, but I'll, let's do that. Yeah, it's close to one. It's close to negative one, actually, right? Okay. If you don't have R showing up, here we go. If this is the calculator you're going to use that's in your hand right now, you don't have to do this ever again. Hit second zero. So you get there. If your R's already showing up, don't do this shit. You don't have to. All right. So hit R a second zero. So you get to the catalog. This is the catalog of everything the calculator can do. Uh, hit the button that's got the D above it. See the, uh, there it is. The one that says matrix is X to the negative one button. It's got the D. Hit that. Bam. So then you go to the D section of the list. Right, and now scroll down. Oh shit, King, hold on. One problem at a time, please, dear God. Uh, scroll down to where it says diagnostic on. Hit enter. Enter. And now if you go back to stat calc number four, now your R should show up. All right. Is that cool for any, anybody who didn't have the R showing up? Now let's come back to King. Remember, so for example, look, is this what's happening, King? I don't have my L2, right? Because silly me, I just deleted it. You never delete, you clear. You hit clear, not delete. So if you ever delete it, that's too bad. It's gone forever. No, I'm joking. Hit stat. Hit stat. Set up editor, number five. It, it resets up the editor. And then it's very anticlimactic, right? But if I go back in, my list two is back. And in fact, the data is still in there too. That's kind of nice. Yeah, okay. So, man, it would have been so nice if I would have just had this written down, all these instructions. My God, gotcha. Jeff. Oh, yeah, I did. It's on the, uh, it's on the calculator guide that's been on the, the website forever. And it's on the sheet. Remember this? Let me share this uh, sheet. Holy sheet. Where are you? There you are. Let me share this real quick. No, it's not that one, Jeff. Damn it. Ah, screw it sheet it's on that linear correlation sheet all right i might as well follow through now that i said i was going to all right there all right let me share this where'd you guys go there you are give me a second give me a minute give me an hour let me see so you can see canvas again um this sheet here intro to correlation it's gonna want me to download the damn thing. All right, fine, whatever. Just open the damn thing. All right, okay. Can you guys see that sheet now about the beer? Remember the beer? I don't know if you're saying yes right now. Hopefully you can see the one. Remember this, the dots? And on the back side, oh, look at that. All the steps. Even that weird ass thing, diagnostic thing we just did. What? But Jeff, that makes too much sense. I know. All right, so, I mean, all right. 
Ooh, now, of course, you cannot use uh, that sheet. You cannot use the calculator guide when you're taking the quiz today. You can't. Will some of you do it? Yeah, you will. Will I ever know? No, I won't. I won't have a clue. But you're not, don't. Just don't. I mean, that's the whole point, is to test you on your ability to do these things, not for you to read. I'm not, this is not reading comprehension class. All right. Any other questions from homework or anything else? No, okay. Uh, all right, let's, let's do a quick example. Let me, let me show you. If you weren't here last time, let me just uh, blow your mind a little bit. So I, this is up on the internets. You guys can see the chi-square table? Chi-square table, yes, thank you. Um, get over there. So, degrees of freedom. Uh, anyway, so if you missed the class where we introduced this sheet, this chart, this table, uh, you're gonna wanna go see the, the video. Um, this, the, the one difference between this and the uh, z-score chart is the z-score chart's all about to the left and this is all about to the right. So it's kind of nice because it's set up for goodness of fit test very easily, right? Because then I can just look over here for the alpha and these are the goodness of fit test uh, values that I would use. So these are the actual values of alpha. That's kind of nice. So that's one reason why they set it up this way. Okay, so do this for me. Um, if my degrees of freedom were uh, eight, oh God, no, Jeff. Let's say my degrees of freedom are three, right? Let's say I have degrees of freedom of three and my alpha is 0 0.01. What's my chi-squared that I would use? Three degrees of freedom. Alpha is 0 0.01. What's my chi-square? All right, there we go. Thank you. Degrees of freedom are three. Alpha is 0 0.01, so 11.345. So it, 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 it is different. It is different, but it's not that different from like the T-score chart, right? It's, it's very similar. You find stuff in, in a very similar ways. You stop at the right row based on the degrees of freedom and then you go over to the correct alpha. Now, if anybody's curious, is anybody curious about what the hell these are doing? At all? No, okay, that's fine. If you're not, I'm not gonna talk about it, too bad. Um, so that's where you go for a good as a fit test. Right, I, all right, nobody said they're curious and I apparently don't care, I'm gonna tell you anyway. This would be the other side if I wanted to make, you could actually make confidence intervals for standard deviations, just like you can for means, just like you can for percentages. You could make confidence intervals for standard deviations. This would be one side of the interval and this would be the other side of the interval. Anyway, so we're not gonna do that, <laughs> but I just wanna let you know that's, that's why that part of the chart is there. Okay, uh, okay so let's do this. Let's try a problem out. Boom. Hey. All right. So, uh oh, let me move my sun and moon over. All right. That's a little bit better. There. Oh, nowhere near a professional studio. I don't care. Um, so, let's say I had uh, four categories, right? Category one, two, three, four. I love it. I love it. So these are the categories. Um, and let's say that, in fact, let me put up here. Yeah. Let's say that one, two, three, four, I expect 10% uh, of people to be in category one. I expect 30% to be in category two. I expect 40% to be in category three. And I think that leaves 20. Yes. All right, let me stop for a minute. You guys, 
you guys with me? That's what I expect to have happen. That's what the general population does, right? So these are like, I don't care. <laughs> these are four categories. You can imagine what they might be. Maybe they're level of proficiency in driving manual cars, right? Level one, level two, level three, level four. Airline seats, maybe? Like if there are four in a row, what, who would pick what? Although then the window seat doesn't make sense, but oh well, whatever they are. There are four categories. Fill it in with whatever happens to enter your brain. Oh, I see, okay, I like it for the four, I, I got you. So 10% first class makes sense, okay. I, not the seats, but the actual type of seat. I like it, that actually would work. Um, so this is what's expected. So if I take, uh, if I look at 500 people, what do I expect? How many do I expect to be in category one? Yeah. 10% of 500, I expect to be in category one. So the, the type of problem that we did on Tuesday was it was a uniform distribution. So then I would have, if this would have been uniform, not this, I would have just taken 500 divided by four and they would all get the same amount. This is not uniform, is it? Look, not the same. So how do I figure out how much is expected in each one? 10% of 500 is 50, keep going for me. What's 30% of 500? 150, I like it. And then 40% of 500, you add these two. <laughs> I love how percentages work. And then what's 20% of 500? Yes, okay. So I could either tell you that I expect the stuff that I'm working with to be uniformly distributed, in which case we would take the total divided by how many categories. So they all get the same amount. That's what uniform means. Or I could say I expect percentages, a certain percentage to be in each category. And then I just take the percentage of the total, bam! What, what do I have to make sure? What, what should these all add up to be? What do they have to add up to be? Yes, 500. So you can just real quick, make sure they're 500 so you didn't make some silly mistake. Like I would put a five here instead of a 50 or something, right? So it's a nice little check. Now, I have to tell you how many we observe because you're not going to go out in the world because we can't do that as much anymore at the moment. But even if we could, I wouldn't make you do this. But I would tell you how many observe in this one uh, airline, I guess. We'll go with that suggestion. Thank God somebody out there is creative. I'm not. I'm, 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 it's gone. It's gone. I'm done. Um, let's say I have, uh, uh, yes, 65 there. Uh, oh shit, Jeff, don't, don't, oh God, you got to keep up with what the hell's going on, buddy. Uh, sure. Uh, all right, let me see. Uh, why did I do that? Oh, screw it, screw it. Uh, 15, uh, up 15, down five, down 25, so it's got to be up 25. I think that's right. Does that add up to be, somebody help me out. Uh, 305, 370. Wait, one, two, three, 300, 405, 435, 500. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay. So, see what I'm saying? So, this, now, real quick, I would give you this. I would give you this. This, you would have to calculate yourself. But I have to tell you these, obviously, these are the observations, and you're not going out making observations. You're just trying to do the damn problem. So, I have to tell you this. This you would have to calculate. So if anybody is like, where'd those come from? It would be in the problem. I'd have to tell you. So if you weren't here last time, if the, the all right, so several things. If, so what we're trying to test here is whatever I observed, does it follow what I expect or not? So why isn't it good enough? You could say, well, right now you could say they're different, Jeff. So no, it doesn't follow. Well, because even if I expect 10% to be in category one, does that mean that it always has to be exactly 10% or else I'm wrong? No, that's foolish. On average, 10% or one, on average, thirds. So any sample can, of course, be a little di different. 
So what's the whole point then? What has to happen with the sample for it to be evidence that it doesn't follow what I expected? Not only does it have to be different, it has to be different enough. And that should sound very familiar, right? So the shape we're dealing with is job of the hut, right? It's not normal, it's skewed right. And zero would mean no difference. Obviously there's gonna be a difference. And somewhere there's gonna be a critical chi-square, that's the symbol for what we're talking about. Somewhere there's gonna be, just like there was a critical Z, just like there was a rejection region with Z scores, there's gonna be a rejection region with chi-square. So I'll tell you what, before we even do anything more with the table, what if alpha is 0 0.01? And my degrees of freedom, what are my degrees of freedom? It's not 499, just to stop people. Oh shit, I was too late for Lewis. I'm sorry, Lewis. Yeah, degrees of freedom for goodness of fit tests are based on the number of categories. They're based on the number of categories. In fact, the formula becomes K minus one because math people can't spell. We saw category K. That's not the real story, but oh, it sounds good. So in this case, the degrees of freedom is three. So that should hopefully, so we just looked that up, didn't we? What's the chi-square for that? We just looked it up earlier. You can scroll through the chat and see what it was. Or you can look it up on the chart again. Yeah, 11.345. So what this means is if my sample ends up with a chi-square more than 11.345, then that sample is so far away from them being exactly the same that it would be evidence that they are not the same. I am really hoping that just makes that should make so much sense. If it's somewhere in here, then that's just normal sample fluctuations. If it gets out here, that's enough evidence to say, oh shit, that's beyond normal fluctuations. That really represents a difference. Obviously there's a 1% chance I'm wrong, but that's pretty good. So if the whole point of this is to test to see how different these are, it makes sense that the first thing I wanna do is Subtract these. Now I also square them at the same time, just to save time. And for the much the same reason we squared when we had standard deviations, we were trying, what are you doing over there? I don't know. <laughs> much the same reason why we squared when we were calculating standard deviations. So it should make complete sense that right here, I'm gonna do that. Take the difference, because the fundamental idea is how different is what I saw from what I expected, and then square it because some of them will be negative, some of them will be positive. I don't know what the hell I'm doing with my hands today. Neither why. Oh, Jeff. Well, Jeff's going insane. All right. So this would be 15 squared, right? The difference squared. And what's 15 squared? Squared. 15 squared. Is it 225? Yeah. Everybody with me right now, right? Isn't the difference 15 squared 225? The difference is 20 squared. The difference is 20 squared is 400. The difference is 25 squared. Is that 625? 25 squared? Now again, I just never learn. I do not learn. I did the exact same thing yesterday. That's my wall <laughs> over here. I have not left myself room. There's one more column we're supposed to do. Jeff, I'm gonna have to put it up there. Damn it. All right, so the other column we have to do. Let me make this video better. Oh, oh shit, get over there. Let me see. This is going to be very awkward for me, but I won't. So the, another column would be this. Uh, and this step really hopefully makes sense. I have to see how, how big of a difference is this based on what I expected? What's the relative 
difference relative to this. So if I expected 18 billion, this is nothing. But if I expect 50, this is kind of significant. So I take each one of these divided by the expected, this divided by the expected. So let's see what we get. Uh, so this table, so what's 225 divided by 50? What is that gonna be, Jeff? 4.5? Yes, okay, 4.5. So that would go here. I might have room, I might have room, let's see. 4.5. And then 400 divided by 150. Okay, third, yeah, 2.67. And then uh, 400 divided by 200. Ooh, I need help. And then 625 divided by 100, 6.25. So again, try. So I did have room. Okay. I did have room. I didn't know how big they would end up. I don't know, that's pretty smushed, but is that all right, guys? That's kind of smushed. Shit, it is kind of, let me put them up here too. Uh, so those are the numbers, oh, get out of there. There, okay. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> So the chi-square formula is the sum of those. That's what the chi-square formula is, right? Uh, let me see, I can get rid of you, I think. Let's get some room here. So the chi-square formula is the sum of those relative differences. So if I add all those up, what do I get? 10.92. 15.42? Hey, all right. So did we find evidence? Did we find evidence that they're different? 15.42, did it get far enough away? Yeah, it's way up here, shit. So we found the relative you know, square differences between these two, added them up, and that total was big enough to show evidence that the sample is off from what was expected. There is something different. That's evidence that there is something different about whatever group I observed. Okay. That's really kind of cool. I mean, this is really kind of, uh, it could just be me, but it really is kind of cool. All right, so let's do this. Let's look at, any questions on that problem? I know it's a little messy up there. I gotta put some more whiteboard decal up there, get some more room. <sighs> Maybe next time I could do it better. I don't know. You always use this. Hey, there we go, Raul, exactly. Chi-square, dude. Anybody going into psychology? Anybody going into education? Anybody going into business, economics, accounting. Yeah, biology, holy shit. In fact, before I forget, like I did the other day of my other class, I'm gonna show you guys some kick-ass cool shit. If I remember where I put these. I'm gonna have to do that later, because where the hell did I put them? Jeff! Oh yeah, I remember now. Okay. Oh, why am I doing that? I don't know. Okay, hold on, hold on. Holy shit, stop it. There we go, okay, now, get over there. Let me share the screen, sorry, sorry. Let me do this real quick, because we don't have much time, let's see. Uh, can you guys see psychological distress experience of Nigerians in COVID-19 pandemic? Yes, okay. That is remarkably specific. Uh, oh crap, let me see. Uh, I can't blow this up, damn, that's kind of tiny. Can you guys see that? Let me see. Shit, if I do that, there we go, now I'm talking. 
So I just want to show you real quick. Uh, I mean, there. look, chi-square, there's a chi-square. From what we've done so far, we haven't done much with chi-square, but would you say that's a very big chi-square? Anybody, would you say that that chi-square, can you guys all see that chi-square right there? Yeah, it's not a very big chi-square, is it? Not really, no. So look down here, 0 0.194, look what they say. There was no significant difference in the reported severity of depressive symptoms among female and male residents, chi-square 1.94. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? You already kind of knew a little bit that that was not a very big chi-square score. And that, of course, means that there was not significant evidence of a difference. Remember, the bigger chi-square is until it passes that Hot, that uh, like the 11.345, that, that, that value, it's got a passive value to show evidence of a difference. That's a very small chi-square. So of course they're gonna say that it didn't show evidence of a difference. Uh, let me see what else I got up here. So that one's about COVID and depression. That's always great, Jeff, I know. And this one's about, can you guys see the one about uh, mouth rinse? No? I don't really trust this uh, screen share, thank you. Uh, where was this at, Jeff? So here, what about that one? What do you guys just, on the certain, now again, you can't really say without more information, but what's your, what's your feel about that chi-square value? I mean, it looks pretty big, right? Now, I actually have to know this. Well, got, we don't know for sure, Laurel. Be, I'm kind of setting you up a little bit, and I don't mean to. Exactly. You got to know how, not the population, but how big the sample was. How, how, what was the degrees of freedom, right? But they do say here it's significant heterogeneity. Ooh, I like that word. Anyway. And then this was significant. I mean, that's a pretty big chi-square value. And again, depending on what the degrees of freedom were, but look also what they put P, the P value means the same thing it did before. That is very small P value. So that tells me that the chi-squared is significant, you right? All right, maybe, maybe. And what's my last one I got here? Uh, injury prevalence in football. Oh, neato. And there's some chi-squared business Oh, there's somebody else down there. Oh, Malachi's got people joining everybody. Hey, everybody. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Look here real quick. Do you see how it says P greater than 0.05? Right, we know what that means, P greater than 0.05. So look what they say. It is demonstrated that the occurrences are distributed regardless of their positional role. So that they did a chi-square analysis they had all the positions. I don't, this is interesting to me. This is saying there's 60 positions, but sure. Um, that looks like a big chi-square, but just like Alex said earlier, their sample size is pretty big. So it, it turns out it's not a big enough. In fact, I don't know if you guys are with me at all on this. If we look at our chi-square sheet, um, where was it? Chi-square for degrees of freedom of 60. Yeah, look, look, for um, Jeff, 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 you've got a chi-square sheet. Uh, let me see, where'd it go? Oh, gosh, I can't keep anything straight. Urgh. There it is. Okay, hold on. Give me a sec. I've lost everybody, but oh, well, I'm used to that. So look down here. Degrees of freedom around 60. Do you see how 40 something is not very big at all? Up here is where it gets better evidence and that's in the 70s and 80s. All right, anyway, I, I just wanted to show you a few in the wild occurrences of chi-square. So you almost always will see the p-value and sometimes you'll see a chi-squared analysis in statistical analysis in journals and stuff. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. What was I going to do? Okay, so that was that for that. So let's come back to this. Let me share this one. All right, so this one we looked at, because remember the one side here, this side, there's a video up now. I put it up on Canvas. It's actually from, I think it's from last semester when I taught this. Remember back in the day, in the before times, when we taught, had classes in rooms? So there's a, there, I have a link to the video from last semester's class when I did this sheet in class because I, 
I did not feel like doing it again. So I was like, let me go see where that video is. So it's, a, so it's got all the steps and blah, 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 blah. Uh, this side I want to look at right now. So this first example up here is, and please, dear God, let me know if I'm losing anybody. Don't let me just go. I'm trying to make sure I have enough time. Uh, okay, nobody's saying anything. So those examples I showed you, don't freak out too much about those. I really just wanted to show you the chi-square in the real world. So you realize we're doing real world shit. Yeah, big kid stuff, guys. Um, so here, this problem is a bag of M&Ms and we, for some reason, expect a uniform distribution of colors in the M&Ms bag, right? So I have, uh, so that means that since there were 42 total M&Ms and there were six categories of color, they would each expect seven, right? Is that cool? 42 total divided by six categories, seven for each. That's what uniform means. They all should get the same amount. And then I did all the analysis we just did and I got nowhere near big enough. Can you guys get that 11.071 for yourselves? Do you see how there's six categories? So the degrees of freedom is five, and there's a 0.05 level level of freedom. Oh my God, let me see. Whatever I'm drinking, do I need more or less of it? 0.05 level, oh, I guess I need more. Less, less, sorry, too late for me. Can you guys find that on the chi-square chart? Can you make sure that past Jeff did this correctly? Alpha is 0 0.05, degrees of freedom is five. Do you see 11.071 there? I would have been really embarrassed if that wasn't right, but it is right. Yay, past Jeff. Anybody have questions about that? If you haven't, if you don't have a printer, you obviously can have up on your screen the various charts, um, right? So, okay, all right. So you have to be able to use that chi-square chart. Uh, so what I want you guys to do right now, can you please, uh, let me zoom in on this a little bit. Yeah, buddy. You guys see the blood cholesterol level problem? You have to, it's right there. Um, can you please take a minute let me get you started a little bit. Can you read through this real quick? Read through this. I'm going to ask you a question. What is your favorite color? No. All right, guys. Do you guys get the point of this problem? So there's people living in a secluded area. They're eating a very different diet from what the general population does. And we're curious about what that means for the blood cholesterol, for example. How, what's going to go in that box that I'm on right now? What's going to go right here? Yeah, I tell you directly. I've got to tell you the observations because you're not actually going to go travel to a secluded area and make your own observation. I got to tell them to you. So 132 goes right there. No, Jeff. How can you figure out what goes right here in the expected? Yeah, yeah, good. So less than 130, I expect 20%. That's what the general population does. So 20% of 500, 100, I like it. So take a minute or a couple, finish filling that in, right? Finish filling these in. Oh, wait. And then I'm going to break you out into rooms so you guys can help each other finish the problem. If you don't have the chi-square chart, don't worry about getting the, the rejection region. I just want you to finish the table and get the chi-squared calculated from the sample. Give you guys a few more moments. The observed one, you can just fill in. I tell you those. The expected one, you got to do some calculating. Oh, 
Okay. Have you got the table kind of copied down? I want to let you guys have enough time to get that copy down because when I break you out of the rooms, you're not going to be able to see this anymore. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start setting up the rooms. Make sure you get finished copying down what you need. You can do this, Jeff. We have 32 people, so let's do let's do 10 rooms. Yeah, I like it. Some of you guys are going to have four people, and most you're going to have three people. I like that. This is where I can find out who's actually here and who logged in and then went back to sleep. Found that out yesterday. That was exciting. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Create the room, so get ready. So just when the link shows up, you go to your room. Here, here we go. Help each other out. Okay, go to your room. All right, somebody's in their room all by themselves. Somebody, everybody go to the room. Let's see, Ian and Kimberly, are you here? Angel's in there all by himself. I'm gonna move him. What about Angel Sanchez and Vicky Ayala? Are you guys out there? All right, I'm gonna move. Oh shit, Malachi, are you back? Yes, sir, I didn't get paired with anybody. No, you did. They're just not really here. So I'm going to put somebody in your room. So go back into your room. All right. Don't worry. I'll put somebody with you. Go ahead, back on in there. Can you go back in there, Malachi? There you go. Okay. All right. Let me see. Who is not really here? If you can hear my voice, you shouldn't be able to hear my voice. You should be in a room. You should be, Re, are you not out there, Re? Let's see, Angel Sanchez, Re Choi. Yeah, I'm calling you guys out. This is being recorded. Ian Alberts, Tanya Hernandez. Hello. All right. Good to know. You're not really here. You're not going to get credit for being in this class today. Oh, there's Ian. Shit, now you're by yourself, dude. Let me see. Let me move you to three. All right. Who else do I have? Tanya, Re, Angel. Tanya, Re, and Angel. Oh, well. All right, I'll keep track of that. You guys are not really here. That's not good. I don't appreciate that. Oh, there we go. Somebody, oh, let's see. Tanya, oh, Re went. So now I just got Angel <clears throat> and Tanya. Okay. Let me see. I should probably do this. Three twenty. I think it's forty eight. There we go. Everybody went now. Okay. Amazing. Thirty percent of five hundred. 
35 percent. I think it's 175. Shaisa! No! Why? Why? There we go. And then 15% would be half of that. 75. 250, 400, 500. Okay. <laughs> Little boy blue and the man in the moon. When you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when. But we'll get together then. You know, we'll have a good time then. Bum, 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 ba da dum, bum, ba da da dum, dum, da 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 dum. Bum, bum. The other day came to life in the usual way. Really, Chuck? Did it, did it, too? Oh, shit. I'm here all by myself. Everybody's in a breakout room. 54, 76. Divided by 175. 31.291. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, I knew that one. Jeff. Jeff. Oh. Okay, 9.72. Okay. Oh, this is the best way to teach. <laughs> just make every Zoom just break out and work on this thing. And let me. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, Jed's a millionaire. Go said, Jed, move away from there. Yeah. This is Jeff going crazy. All right, let me see. How long has it been? I should probably have kept track. Wait a minute. Tanya? I thought everybody went. Oh, well. So Tanya is really not here. Oh, oh. oh I could have, you know, paused recording, but <laughs> this is, oh, well. This is fine. Hey, everybody in the future watching this video, you're all in breakout rooms except for Tanya, who's probably went back to bed. Um, so I'm all by myself in the main room. Wishing everybody come back. Come back, everybody. We're all working hard. I like it. Do, 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 do.
Interesting. Here comes people. All right. Let's see. Everybody's coming back. So there's a few people still hanging out in there. 30 seconds and then their rooms will disappear. Is anybody, yeah, there's somebody alone. There's a few people in there all alone. They're like, I just need to get away from people. I understand. Why are they all in there alone? So, well, they got 10 more seconds and then their room's gonna disappear. All right, so let's see. Me share, let's see, everybody should be coming back right now. Everybody make it back. If you didn't make it back, <laughs> uh, forget it. Let me see, all right, here we go. Here's what I got. Can you guys see, or am I got the right thing? Can you guys see this problem? Yes, okay, thank God. Are those the numbers you guys got? Did you get, you never know, I could make a mistake. And then what'd you guys get now? I want you to realize something. Do you guys see, no, you don't have to do this because I'm never gonna give you like a crazy long ass problem, but you could actually make L1, L2, L3 would be L1 minus L2 squared, L4 would be L3 divided by L2, right? You could use your lists just like we have in the past if you want to. And that way you don't actually have to round anything and it's easier to add. Anyway, anyway, so what'd you guys get when you added this last column up? Something crazy, 82.9, yeah, so. Uh, let me see, I, 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 I'm not able to draw in Word. I'm not that proficient. I'm sure there's probably a way to do it, but I don't know it. But uh, what is the chi, oh, let's do this. Let me show you the chi-square table and let's see if anybody can figure out what the chi-square value is gonna be. So just to remind you guys, um, I'm gonna remind you something that I have forgotten already. That's good, Jeff, that's not gonna work. Alpha is 0.01. And what's the degrees of freedom for this? Oh, is this the same value, Jeff? Is that what you just did? Is that what you just did? <laughs> Sorry. Degrees of freedom is three. So what's the chi-square value? Can you guys still see the chi-square table? 11.34, yeah, it's the same damn thing I just did. Yeah, whatever, Jeff. Um, obviously not into, uh, um, what do you call it, variety. So let's come back to this other thing. When I do this, can you guys see the, the problem again? Okay, so I'm not sure how to make this do that automatically. So, oh well, let me just come back to it. All right, so 82.99 is obviously much, much bigger than 11.345. I don't know if you've ever seen the double inequality simple, but that just means much bigger. So we don't really need it here, it's just bigger. So what's that mean? We definitely went past 11.345. We are definitely in the rejection region. So what does that mean? Did we find evidence of something? Rut row. Do we need a picture? I can't really draw. Yeah, we did. So 11.345 is where the rejection region starts and we got 82.99. It's gonna be way over there. So we have found evidence. And now I've already got, oh yeah, that, that this secluded areas inhabitants. have uh, different cl blood cholesterol levels. In fact, let's be more specific. Is their blood cholesterol level better in a good way or better in a bad way? Are they, are they more healthy in terms of blood cholesterol or less healthy? 
more healthy or less healthy? More healthy or less healthy? Uh, they're more healthy. What's better, a low cholesterol or a high cholesterol? We're thinking like the bad cholesterol, right? So uh, DCL expected is 100 with low and they had 132. And then the next lower, the next uh, one is, is more that. And then much less higher levels of cholesterol. So this would be something like, uh, do you guys remember, maybe not remember, but have you read in history books when the Mediterranean diet was a thing and people were just guzzling olive oil because it was discovered that the people that live in the area have uh, lower cholesterol and all this other kind of stuff. So people said, oh, they do olive oil. They do a lot of other things different, but everybody wanted a quick, easy fix. So you started just guzzling olive oil saying, that'll make me all better. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I know. Maybe not guzzling it directly. Maybe some people did, but it's not quite like whatever the apple cider vinegar is or whatever people do. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it could, yeah, you never know. Um, but anyway, so there's a lot of other variables that could come into play, but uh, apparently these people, this doesn't tell me why, it just tells me that they, there is evidence that they do have better cholesterol levels. Then I could come in with more other statistical analyses to get deeper into, is there a connection between uh, this certain food they eat and their blood cross, or is it the water, or is it the air, or is it genes, or is it whatever? We don't know. Oh, that doesn't get into this, right? This doesn't get into that. There we go. Wow. Maybe. So the two main types of goodness of fit tests that you will see. Okay, Malachi comes out of nowhere. Uh, the two main types of goodness of fit tests you will see are the uniform expectation, the uniform expectation, and the percentage breakdown, the non-uniform, right, where it's different amounts for each category. So both have their own way of figuring out what numbers go in here. Obviously uniform, these should all be the same. That's what uniform means. And then something that's not uniform, these should not all be the same. That's amazing. So you just got to be careful about that. And of course, there's the formula that we just used, right? Let's just sum those up. Uh, oh, only these. Unfortunately, there's only so much time. I mean, to be really honest, uh, if this, if, if we just had more time, we could do it. There's so much more you could do with chi-squared tests. And one of them is a test of independence, which is a very, very strong test. Uh, that actually tests to see if two things are independent on each, from each other or, or dependent on each other. So, and then you could do chi-square tests for hypothesis tests for standard deviations. You could say, we believe the standard deviation is more than nine. And then we could do a whole hypothesis test. And of course, what distribution do standard deviations follow? Chi-square. So instead of using the normal curve to set up rejection regions, we would use a chi-square curve to set up and you could have two tail tests, you could have one tail test. Anyway, what's most important to me though, this is an introductory stats course, is to realize that chi-square distribution exists, why does it exist, and then what can you use it for, some basic things. And the fact is, it feels very much like what we did with normal curve. The basic ideas don't change, it's the distribution that things follows that changes. Okay, and no, they don't have the cure for Rona. Yeah, no, not even a vaccine yet. All right. Okay, don't eat fish uh, aquarium uh, cleaning materials. All right, don't do that. Don't inject light in some weird way. Okay, uh, oh, it's time. That's beautiful. That's exactly how much I wanted to get through. I love it. Oh, there is one more thing I wanna say. Uh, there will be a practice final. I will post it to Canvas. Um, and there will be an answer key for that. There's also, come on, where is this thing? Here it is. Where'd you guys go? There you are. There's also this. I'm going to put this up. I have no idea if this is going to help anybody at all. But this is, this is kind of like the way that geek-ass Jeff would study for a class. 
is here's all the basic ideas from every chapter and I would just check them off if I felt comfortable about the idea, right? I got to the point where if you told me a, a concept, I could tell you what section it was in, in the book. Uh, I'm not saying you have to do that level or that kind of studying, but that's just the way I used to do it. So I'm gonna put this up on Canvas in case it will help anybody. Yes, Christopher. Uh, Final's going to be taken over Zoom. Uh, is today our last quiz? I don't know. Uh, let me think. Next week is going to be reviewing for the final. So the, the, the um, what do you call it? Oh, and if any of you guys have um, accommodations with uh, ARC, I've got to check with them. I don't think it's anything different. I think what I'm just gonna do, if you have, um, you have to let me know if you have accommodations and then I can check with the ARC and, and, and make sure. Uh, and then I could give you whatever accommodations you need, uh, like more time or something. If you need accommodations that I can't give you, we need to figure out something to do with that. Is everybody with me? So just email me or, or something if you do have accommodations and I'll figure out what to do about that. Okay, I, I really don't know what, what they're doing. Anything else, any other questions about anything? I didn't really answer the one about the quiz, did I? Uh, I this, more than likely this is the last quiz because next week is gonna be mostly devoted to review for the final. Um, okay. So if there's no other questions, nobody needs to hang out for a bit. You guys can head out. You're welcome. Today's quiz is on chapter 12. Yes, it's on um, correlation and regression. Part of the quiz is you gotta scan the results on your graphing calculator for linear, uh, for this line of best fit and scatter plot. Okay, so I'm gonna go make that active right now. Today's quiz is based on today. No, 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 no. Today's quiz is based on uh, linear correlation. Uh, because uh, like the crazy person I am, I don't like to quiz you on stuff that we just went over. Does that make sense? Yeah, so this, you should have had plenty of time to do the homework for this. So should be more ready for this quiz. Uh, should be is the operative word. Let me make that quiz active, shit. Any other questions, guys? Right, the quiz is now active. It's out and join live. Okay, I'm gonna leave. Bye, everybody. You're welcome.